And welcome to the Talent Outdoor Show. I'm Charlie. I'm JD. I'm Fred. I'm Captain Paul. And I'm Grant. So, hey, Robert. What's going on, guys? Hey. There you go. I had a text Robert this morning. There was a, a loud, rapid beeping sound coming from his uh, his office over there. And I'm like, uh, I think something's going to blow up in there. That's like that, that <laughs> beep, beep, beep you hear right before, you, right before the explosion. Yeah, you know, when the timer had – Yeah, it was. But I just – hey. <laughs> You never know. <laughs> so, Can't Robert, we're cut. out here in the parking lot um, trying to figure out. So what. It sounds like it's going to go off over there. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I I woke up this morning, Friday morning, recording. I woke up this morning to a very angry woman. Uh-oh. And I was on the phone. I didn't wake up to it. I was on the phone dealing with some stuff. And all of a sudden, my, my wife appeared at the, the bedroom door quite angry. And I, 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 I don't I, – I, so – we had a stray dog show up a while back. Just been kind of hanging around the house a little bit. No big deal, you know. Cute little dog, little looked like a little healer mix, you know. She's made herself at home, been playing with my dog. We wouldn't let her in the house, you know. And she started to feel a little more, more at home and becoming more and more comfortable. Mm-hmm. And she'd already gone out and took one of the, you know, got furniture furniture on the back porch, the cushions on it and stuff. <laughs> and one of the pillows got delivered to the backyard and shredded. And it oh. took me and both the kids to pick up all of the fluff. Um, from the, uh, from the, uh, from the, um, yard and, um, Uh, y'all see what that is right there? Oh boy. See what that is? That's paint. That's paint on the hood of my wife's car that Uh has been shredded down to the metal. Um, all the way to the metal. And then, and then the headlight covers, the, uh, front bumper clip. Oh. Oh, all the way. You in trouble. So around our house and like most country homes, we have a few little field mice around, right? And every now and then a field mice, 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 mice. Is, the mice will get up there into Mises. the, some of the, so their cousins and their niece, mices and their yeah. uncles. And, anyway, it got up into, to get up in one of the vehicles and you'll hear, you'll hear the dog, you, Rusty goes over and he'll, and he's just sniffing and snorting at him. Yeah, buddy, I see you over there. And um, he'll get up there, and he's looking at me from across the room. And they'll, they'll snort at it, but they won't touch anything. They don't scratch anything. They just they just sit there and sniff at it and snort at it. And every now and then, they'll catch one. And one dog will get one end to the other, and they'll spook it out there, and then they'll grab it, and then they'll run around and play with it until it doesn't want to play anymore. <laughs> it quits moving. And um, throwing it Hug up in the air and, and stuff. Squeeze him and call him George. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we put this uh, – Poison everywhere, and, and we've had to because my truck had to go to shot one. It cost over a thousand dollars to rewire all of the stuff where the mice got it and built a nest. It happens. The horn went oh. off one night in the rainy night. Rain's coming down. I hear him laying in bed. I heard man, and he's kept going. I said, "What on earth?" And uh, a mouse had got a mouse had got up in there and crawled up in one of the little electrical boxes and made a nest and had peed all over the electronics and it finally shorted out. Oh. And so that had to go in. That was not a warrantied item. And, oh. they, and so we started putting this poison called Talon G. It's these little packets. Mm-hmm. And you throw them in there. And the, you can't let the dogs get to it because it'll kill a dog. And um, so a mice, mice, mouse got into her car apparently last a night. A mouse. A, a lot mouse. of mice. Well, I mice don't know if it was one. if it, it was, was if it was a mice or some mi- mouse, it, Ooh, but it was a whole bunch rat. of them. Or it was, it was a <laughs> anyway, something got under the hood of that car, and this stray dog that's been living in the yard decided to try to dig its way to <laughs> the mouse and wow. has shredded the whole front bumper. Didn't really pan shredded, out. Shredded shredded the headlight. Sh- Chewed the paint off the hood down to the metal. Oof. Chewed the headlight cover, the, the clear part, all of the. And this is a nice car. This it was about a year old, and um, so now a uh, comprehensive <laughs> insurance claim. I guess that's going to have to be either uh, that or coming out of the uh, the Charlie the Charlie hunting. Uh, whatever it takes fun, to make my whatever. wife happy again <laughs> is going to be required. So I'm going to be heading out of here in a little bit to go to the body shop and show All some right. pictures because uh, I wouldn't want to drive down the interstate. But I'm not driving this car to work. So, yep. And so she said, uh, that car, that dog needs to be gone. I and I'm like, that dog is going to be gone. So I said, uh, so I picked the dog up and she jumped in the other car and I, I said, open the back. And I threw the dog in the car with her. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I said, take it to, take it to the, uh, the rescue. And they didn't have room. And I said, then she called me. They don't have room. And I'm like, mm. she just, she was astray when she got here. I don't dump dogs, but at this point, you just drive on down the road. And pop now the you know why she got run off from wherever she was before. Ooh, now, and oh. you know, it took a while for her to get that way. That's just a sweet little old dog, but she just decided she was going to do what she was going to catch that mouse for us, <laughs> whatever it took at whatever cost. She was going to get that oh. thing for us. Well, you got a cost. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> thousands, thousands of dollars now. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, anyway, the dog catcher now has the dog. It's done been caught. She took it to work and called the dog catcher, and Easy the dog Dave. is going to have to go find some. So if you're out there Easy and you're Dave. looking for a rescue somewhere over in the Jackson, Washington, Holmes County area, and you get this little white dog that looks like a little healer mix with a little bit of red in her face, she's sweet as she can be. Uh, <laughs> but keep she's her got from, sharp teeth. Keep her away from your car. <laughs> she got sharp Wait. teeth. Poor little old thing. Yeah. You know, uh, poor little old me. I got to go pay for this car now. You know, my wife was telling me the other night that she wished I would treat her like I did when we were dating. So last night I took her out to dinner or a movie and dropped her off at her mother's house. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> like we believe that. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that's all that happened, friends. <laughs> With Fred, you never know. <laughs> mm-hmm. If that's all that happened, Fred, mm-hmm. I, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Fred, you look like you dressed the part today for the. Uh, you're sitting there the watching masters. The, the Masters on yep. your phone. Watching the Masters, got my Masters hat on, Masters shirt on, even got my martini shorts. Well, yeah, yeah, and and everybody, but you're not there. And your proud golf dork pencil. Proud golf dork pencil. Uh, yeah, I got a, I got a pack of them at home. So I'm I'm thinking about playing nine holes this afternoon, pretending like I'm Tiger Woods. <laughs> so what are there sizes in golf clubs? Are there yes, like different yeah, lengths and stuff? Uh, I have to have mine cut down a little bit, <clears throat> slightly. Mm. Mm. I was just gonna say I could see because I I picked up some and I like that thing. Thanks. I have longer. I get longer. Sh- I get about an inch longer, inch and a half longer shaft on my clubs. Well, you play golf, don't you? Or <clears throat> Not you anymore. Have played golf? I used to play a lot of golf. I don't play golf anymore. I'm, I'm every. I, I play golf. Uh, I actually play golf with my son's uh, soon-to-be in-law family uh, on uh, New Year's Eve day for the first time. The first time I played golf in probably ten years. Really? I, you know, when I had my hip replaced, um, I was having so many back problems and stuff. When I had my hip replaced about fourteen, fifteen years ago, I just kind of quit. Man, doing those kind of things, yeah. I would think really? a new hip would give you a better swing. It does. I just, I, I still – I didn't play terrible, but yeah. considering I hadn't played in 10 years. But at one time, I was about a – probably about a six, seven handicap, which ain't so terrible. That's what amazed but. me is when we were at FSU Police, J.D., Herb Sweeney, and the people like that would go – Herb played golf, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I, you're talking about the rednecks of the rednecks. I mean, right. these are like – these are like from the woods rednecks. And out there playing golf – <laughs> they convinced me to go play with them one time. I played around at FSU's golf course one time, but it involved way too much drinking for me, so it was not not well, conducive with my activity at the time. Well, that, I got better as I got drunker. I did too. I mean, that's the way it works. But then I don't remember what happened at the end because it was pretty bad. No, I got to have an electronic score. It kind of well, there is a it. there is a, a peak level of uh, alcohol to 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 to. Yeah, you know, what's par the, ratio? There is an alcohol to par ratio. That's part of the, the hot crazy matrix. Yes, there yeah, is. It's, it's the exactly. hot, well, yeah, and that's part of the that's exactly the, what it is. That's part of the game is learning what that is and and consistently working on that who's, level of, of who's that fellow alcohol that plays intake that's the 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 just. John Daly. John is Daly. One about. goes he out there smoking plowed. cigarettes and getting plastered. I think on the he's mastered that. He has, and <laughs> oh, I, I admire him for it. He, the guy he is, is a, the guy is. An <laughs> he's like the Ron White of golf. He is. I mean, he is. Yeah. Uh, Listen, that guy. You talk about, and he, if he was not a an alcoholic, a, a really bad, <laughs> bad alcoholic. He would have been probably Tiger Woods at level. Is, That's what my wife says uh, about me in the practice of law. <laughs> if you weren't such a drunk. <laughs> We'd be millionaires. He is, ta- he is, John Daly was extremely or is extremely talented. He just don't care. No, he doesn't care. We'll be right back. And we're back. So... 
<clears throat> talking about uh, – did you want to talk about golf some more? I'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. I, when it, nobody ever gives me an itinerary and tells me what we're going to talk about. Then we, that wouldn't be we, our we, show. We don't <laughs> tell you – well, we have a game plan. But nobody shares it with me. I just show up and – What's well, this well, stuff? You got a mouse in your pocket too? <laughs> uh, uh, they, uh, so <laughs> I don't ever know neither. So part of it, I want to talk about our uh, I want to talk about the the things we were discussing with Billy and the upcoming survival classes and things oh, like that. Yeah. Because we've got we've been discussing this lately and a bunch of stuff happened over in Jackson County recently. It's still going on, so I'll go into it too much, but Florida Caverns just had some turmoil. It was in the Democrat. Uh, article in Democrat, and there's a bunch of uh, Dale Cox over there's written about it, and and there's a, a guy that I think very highly of over there that's that's going through some stuff, and he, Billy Bailey, is a local fixture in the Jackson County community, super super guy. I watch follow him on Facebook, and he's man, he he he's raising his daughters um, to learn how to live off the land, and they they he teaches classes on how to how to, 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 to custom slaughter, you know, like goats and pigs and deer and things like that. And I do uh, European mounts, skull mounts, you know, or one method that he teaches. There's several ways to do it. Basically, ultimately, you end up with a skull and horns. I mean, yeah. There's ways to get there. And um, he's been doing some classes recently. And um, also, he's been doing a lot of classes and basically going out and walking through the woods and finding things to eat. And foraging. I think that that is foraging, mm -hmm. foraging classes. And and we had lunch the other day over in Mariana. For in the couple, woods? No, in, in – we were <laughs> sitting in – we were sitting in Jim's – we were yard. sitting in Jim's steakhouse. We <laughs> met up there because you know, he's an optimist and all this stuff. And I've been I've been a guest speaker over there before. And, and so we're sitting there eating. <clears throat> and I'm eating from the salad bar. And he says, well, Charlie, look out the window right there. And, and and I look, and there's some shrubs and some weeds. Salad. And he, and he goes, what do you see? I said, I see weeds. He goes, there's more nutrition right there than there is in that salad in that bowl. It's probably five times the nutrition. There's a – Tastes that, like that dirt, stuff that, but... stuff that looks like sorrel. I mean, that stuff that looks like clover, that's actually sorrel, and that's this and this. Now, that over there has medicinal value and this. And, and I'm going, wow. how, how do you know? – he goes, this is what I do. And um, he said, I'm teaching these classes. And he said, you know, a lot of these – weeds that we see were actually brought here by our ancestors to for survival to, to eat i mean and it's been it's been generated you know, and he was telling me well you know uh, pocahontas was like eight years old whenever she started teaching um the, who were the lewis, lewis and, clark. and clark to to, to and and to survive and, yes and 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 <clears throat> so the thing is is this stuff exists this knowledge is out there and he says there's nobody knows this now and so when we talk about our survival plans and we talk about, okay, so I've got a seed vault. So, you know, I've got enough seed to grow gardens for a couple of years. I'd start cycling my own seed if that came. So we couldn't get stuff in the grocery store if the infrastructure broke down. Well, then, but in the meantime, I got to go grow a garden. And I'm buying books on how to do this stuff because the Internet's not going to exist. So it's, you know, finding ways I can do this. But there's a time, and he said, you walk right out here at this time of year particularly, he said, there's a lot of foraging opportunity right now. There's things growing, it's fresh, it's green. So you get into the summer months, and it's more survivaling, survivalist or surviving, survivaling. I'm trying to blend two words. I'm, my mouth is not working today. And so <clears throat> he said, and so then you're in eating leaves and things like that. But you can still subsist. You can still live that way. And I think, and J.D. and I have been talking about this, that that is valuable information. And he and I both want to learn this stuff. Right? Yeah, I do. I really yeah, do. I, you, you were talking about it on I the – Keep we y'all from stealing I, from my garden when it comes. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember as a, as a child and my, my grandfather that, that pretty much raised me being born in 1911 and surviving, you know, surviving on a, a dirt floor farm over in Washington County and stuff. Uh, the stuff that he talked about eating when he was a kid, he was the youngest of, of ten kids. And, uh, you know, and uh, it just, it, it, we'd be out in the swamp and he'd, he would point at things and say, and I don't remember what it was, but I know some of them because they're, they're birds and whatever, like the old uh, curlews, you know, old curlew mm -hmm. with the hook bill. Now, it's, this is highly illegal to go shoot curlews yeah. to eat. But well, if does, there ain't what, no. What do they look like? It, they're an ibis, a white ibis. They got white old, bird with a hook with a hook bill. It, I swear, I saw some birds fly over the house the other day. Yes. 
that had a hook bill, and my wife said, those cowbirds? I said, they're not cowbirds. Nope. That's something else, but so I don't know the name of that. The, the mature bird gets turns gets all white. Mm-hmm. The, the young ones are brown, and as they get older, when they're younger, they're brown colored. So you'll see the flock mixed together with white and brown birds. The young ones are brown, and they eventually, well, when they get full plumage. House. Well, I'd never seen a flock of them flying around before until just yesterday, literally well, in the field. And because I, it's because like of the amount of rain we have, they're, they're, they feed right along the edge of muddy okay. flats and yeah. whatever else, and that hook bill is for them to reach down and get crustaceans out of the dirt, out of the mud around the edge. They're eating snails and, and clams. That's and what's at the house. That's what so they're saying doing. I cannot shoot them. You cannot. They okay. are protected. However, if if laws don't apply anymore, the brown ones I've been told are delicious. <laughs> are they better fried or grilled? Well, if the laws don't apply like I anymore, said, and I I'm hungry. I'm gonna I, find I, out. I, correct. I cannot testify to that. But I mean, there's certain birds that I just, you know, like a, you go duck hunting and you kill a merganser, a hooded merganser that eats fish. I've I'm been not told gonna if eat you soak it in salt that. water overnight that it's edible. It's not. Yeah, and you can legally kill. You can legally. Shoot shoot mergansers uh, it, during duck season but i'm not going to eat a merganser because they feed on fish and i gotta believe that the they don't taste good i tried it once there you go so <laughs> my point of this is that it, he would share things like that with me which was handed down knowledge when back before there was a game commission and game laws and if they wanted to go hunting they went hunting if they needed food i remember he, he, i remember him telling me stories in the winter time they would gator hunt mm-hmm. they would go out and Gator hunt in the winter time when there ain't no gators yeah, how swimming around. That? They would dig them out. They would go along creek. Oh. They would go along creek banks, and and find take, the den. Find the den along the creek bank with some kind of probe or something sticking mm-hmm. something down the ground. They'd find where that gator had burrowed up under the the edge of the creek, and they would dig a hole and get that gator out through the hole when the gator's pretty much hibernating. But then you had a gator with a bunch of meat you know i mean that kind of stuff you know you can uh you, you can shoot a, a, a robin tastes a lot like a dove you know i don't know if they're protected but, yes it, the but, only thing in florida right now the only animals that are not either that are if they're game birds mm-hmm. they have a season on them and you can look at the list and right. say whatever else um you can look at the list of game animals and there's a season and a bag limit and sure. all that you have non-native species like the iguanas and the boas and the white cowbirds are, are, are non-native uh, mm. invasive species. They're, they're not protected. There's a couple of the, the English sparrows and a few of the little brown birds that we see everywhere that we take for granted. They're not native. The non-native wildlife is not protected. Uh, not, there's, no, there's no protections on them. Now, you can't just go kill them for giggles, but... They're not protected. What's uh, a, is Robin? But anything that's not a game bird, you cannot kill. Because I mean, that's correct. Right. Anything when that is a kid, not, that's the point. So we, you can't kill it we, unless it's a game bird during the season or non-native. And good luck figuring that out on the wing while they're flying by you. But it's good to know these things in case there is a time when the law doesn't matter anymore. Well, when the law and doesn't matter the, and you're trying to kill birds, you're trying it better to be survive. a big enough bird to correct. be worth that shotgun shell. That you're one shotgun shell yeah. you're fixing to shoot and on. And you that better bird, not, so, and, yeah. you, and, and or the 12 you're going to shoot at it because you can't Cause, shoot. Like I said, back to, back to my grandfather, I remember hearing stories of my grandfather when growing up quail hunting with him and you'd see a covey of quail running on the ground there and you'd, you know, I'd pull my shotgun up to shoot that covey of birds and he's, boy, don't you shoot them birds on the ground. Um, well, why not, Papa? Well, it's not sporting, and da 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 da. You know, whatever the the thing was, un- ungentlemanlike, and the dogs, and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. However, I you said, I said, Papa, enough. you mean to tell? I said, Papa, you mean to tell me you ain't never shot a quail on the ground? He said, Well, now. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Now, when I was when I was a young man, and there during the depression and during the war, when you couldn't hardly get a shotgun shell to shoot, he said, and we'd have. We'd go quail hunting with four or five shotgun shells in your shotgun. I mean, mm-hmm. imagine only having. Yeah, that'd be. A- we would never think of going hunting with five shells mm-hmm. in our pocket. Mm-hmm. You know, we might have five boxes, but yeah. we ain't going to have five shells. He said, now, when you ain't got but two or three shotgun shells, what you want to do is you want to <laughs> wait till they line up in a row <laughs> where you get a bunch of them in one shot. And I remember him telling me about shooting blackbirds in the in the pa- in the field out there in, in a cornfield or whatever. He said, what you do is, and they'll get up in that big flock or whatever, yeah, wait, till, <laughs> wait till they turn. He said, when they turn, he said, they'll all turn in unison. You wait till they turn, and right, that's when you shoot and you get the most. He's, but they go out and kill blackbirds. Well, that see, and all that knowledge that used to be common 
yeah it no longer exists That's and the exactly point right. of all this is i want i don't want to just learn how to how to go out and forage i want my kids there yeah they need to know which of these plants that are just growing we consider them weeds we mow them we spray chemicals on even them we try we, to get rid of even them and if you we can never eat yeah charlie even if we never have to use any of that knowledge it's worth having and worth passing down because there's going to come a time history says this always there always is going to come a time yeah. and and, and when we might need to know this, and it may make the difference between having something and well, eating. Well, I, I not. watch, I watch, um, I watch Billy's Facebook stuff, and, and he's on Facebook. He, you friend him and follow him. I think I will. And the thing is, is he'll 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 show pictures. Uh, I thought it's the Chipola Cafe or something like that. So it's <laughs> just where he's eating, and he'll he he only eats you know wild game and fish that he catches in the Chipola River, and and then stuff that. He says I go to the grocery store very little except for staples and yeah. and you know I, I and they get and they supplement what they do by with stuff that grows. That's a cool lost. way. That that's a, a very, very much cool a way lost, of living. That's a lot, but that is a lost, a oh, lost. Yeah. That is Probably lost, lost. So so ancestral knowledge. So we're trying to get him on um, one of the next shows to just talk about. We're working on putting together together some curriculum, and then a lot of it's going to be it'll be location based and time based based on what's growing. Um, but we want to start offering this for a fee, because um, you know he he needs to he needs to you know just something Get he paid wants for to do. Time. Yeah, we got to pay him for his time, um, and we're gonna start putting together some classes and hosting them and uh, advertising them coming yeah. up very shortly. Because oh, awesome. I think this That'd is part of our survival series, so to speak. Uh, we'll be uh, we'll be back in just a second. And we're back. O.J. Simpson died. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know who's going to find the real killer now. What a segue. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, you pulled that out of nowhere. Yeah. Have you seen all of, I know you've seen because you sent me some, all of the uh, memes on uh, the Ford Bronco hearse and the different, I mean, they were just popping up last night like nobody's business. Oh, My wife serious. was sitting there in the recliner. She goes, hey, did you see this one? <laughs> hey, look at this one. Hey, let me forward you this one. I'm like, golly, boy, that. Is. I mean, it was. <laughs> it just, mm. I was cracking up last night. I couldn't get enough of them. There was one of them that had the, like the the caravan going down the highway, with the 50 cops behind it going at two miles an hour. They had a coffin on top of the Bronco. Yeah, it's all <laughs> yeah. on the white Bronco. Yeah, that's, that's if uh, they don't do a funeral processional like this, <laughs> it's just missing an opportunity. <laughs> It's like that guy the other day told him, tried to sell me a coffin. I told him that's the last thing I'd need. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, <laughs> don't ring the yeah. cowbell. <laughs> I looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I said, Please if I ring it, it's going to it's gonna hurt JD's feelings or he's going to get mad and hurt my feelings. <laughs> the, um, Speaking man. of cowbell, the, the 40th, 30th, 20th, I don't know. It was some anniversary of that uh, of the uh, of the, the cowbell, cowbell skit? skit on yeah just like last week uh, I think it was on the eighth or the night whatever I whatever can't. anniversary of that Saturday Night Lights live skit with Christopher Walken and uh, I, I can't stop the laughing cowbell. I, I, I've watched that thing probably five hundred times and it, it cracks me up every time <laughs> the it's, funniest part about the whole thing is the little cut off sweater yeah. shirt he's wearing <laughs> and his little his muffin top yeah. hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> His belly hanging out from under that thing, and he just he's getting just after it. Going after it. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> the world needs a little more cowbell. <laughs> and he gets all sad when. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's funny. That, that's funny. There has, over the years, there have been some incredible, incredible skits on Saturday Night Live that are just completely timeless. And I, I don't even watch the show anymore because I don't. I, I, it's too. I don't left, watch it anymore. Too no, now. it's just left. They, there was one that resurfaced the other day about Sharon Stone walking through the metal detector and Dana Carvey playing the Indian security guard. I hadn't seen that. And he's like, think. "What are you going to need to take off your shirt now?" And, you know, and then, you know, <laughs> it just keeps going through, and they and it won't buzz, and they're going Beep! just so, so she'll have to <laughs> yeah, take, take more clothes off. off. <laughs> By the time it's said and done, she's walking through in her underwear. And, <laughs> Beep. And then they say, that "Sounds Cruz. like me trying to go to uh, Universal Studios." Yeah, <laughs> or you like get, you getting on an airplane anywhere, yeah. anytime. That's <laughs> so, the funniest stuff in the world. You, Watch JD <laughs> try to get on a flight. <laughs> yeah, Universal Studios is the the now. I went down there last time we went down there. I had on a pair of <clears throat> tennis shoes, 
with short socks on, a pair of like. Please tell me the socks weren't black and the shoes white. <laughs> no, they weren't. Okay, all right. Thank I, you. My wife dresses me. <laughs> so. right. And on a pair of shorts, kind of like golf shorts like you're wearing, uh-huh. and a T-shirt, and a baseball cap. And I emptied my pockets out, right? I walked through the metal detector. Well, I have a, you know, the top half of the femur on my left leg is titanium. Right. I have a huge titanium shaft running right down the middle of my femur and a cobalt steel uh, ball and socket for a hip joint, right? You kind of like the Terminator. <clears throat> so, <laughs> <one yeah>. <laughs> but, but so one it sets off the metal detector. And the guy goes, hey, I walk through there, and I, he goes, what's going on? You need to empty your pockets. And I said, my pockets are empty. I have a metal hip joint. I have an artificial hip. And at the time, I was probably, you know, 40, 40 years old, 45 years old, whatever. He didn't believe you? He didn't believe me. <laughs> and he... And I said, I don't have a card or anything, but I have a titan- you know, metal hip. Uh, okay, we'll go back through. So I go back through and goes off again, and he gets his magic wand out, you know, and he mm-hmm. beep, 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 beep. He mm-hmm. goes, you need to empty your pocket, sir. And I'm like, man, my pocket's empty. I, and I finally said, look, dude, I can strip down. I don't know what you're not comprehending about this. I said, I can go through, I'll go through this thing naked, but you're fixing to scare all these women and children here. <laughs> And it ain't going to be no different when it's all over with. You should have told him to empty, empty your pockets himself. Yeah, I said. Let she, him probe said, around I, in there. I ended up turning my pockets inside out and saying, there's nothing in my pockets. I have, you know, whatever. He just couldn't wrap his head around that setting off that machine. Anyway, it's crazy. <laughs> when we get back in just a minute, we're going to talk a little bit about the new Bipartisan Safety Communities Act. Oh, boy. Stuff, what? Um, as it relates oh. to gun shows and private transfers of firearms, Biden's new rule. And we'll be back in just a minute. Oh, boy. And we're back. So as promised before the short break there, uh, we're going to talk about something dry. (laughs) ATF regulations. So, all right, so... uh, the Justice, there's, here's the article. The Justice Department publishes a new rule to update definition of engaged in the business as a firearms dealer. So apparently uh, this last year, uh, the our president told the Justice Department and ATF to push out a rule that would prevent people engaged in the business of selling firearms and make sure that people who are not FFLs, anybody who's engaged in the business of primarily for profit, would have to conduct background checks regardless of where it is and and do they, they comply with waiting periods if they exist, the whole nine yards. It's just like we are we hold FFLs, SOTs, we have licenses to do everything. And as a business, we have to do background checks. We have waiting periods in the state of Florida. If you're in Alabama, there's not. Um we have to use either FDLE's background check system or Nick's check up in Alabama, and we, we do that. We have to do that. Um, <clears throat> well, gun shows, people who are privately and, you know, sell guns privately. Um, now, you know, they which you can as an individual, right, J.D.? If the, one individual can sell another individual a firearm, individual purchase. Yes, absolutely. Um, and you don't have to do background checks. There's no right. waiting periods, anything like that. <clears throat> Correct. Is, is, as long as you're not, uh, well, you know, you, doing yeah. it to do it, to earn a living. To if you're earn a li- to do well, it, it's always been – so you could even do it as a collector. And I've had this explained to me by people from, from that particular bureau that uh, in the federal government, that if you're a collector and you buy – let's just say you buy a certain gun. You buy an M1 Garand that is a 65 or 70% conditioned gun. And you buy it for four hundred dollars, and you turn around and sell it for six hundred dollars, and you take that six hundred dollars and you go buy a seventy or eighty or ninety percent gun, even though you made a profit on that one gun. If you turn that profit around and you're upgrading your collection, or what have you, there's no crime in that, as long as you're not. You know, there was a recent case up in uh, I think it was St. Louis where the the airport director up there mm-hmm. got ended up getting shot and killed by the ATF after they raided his house where he was going out buying guns at a gun store uh, on Friday 
and setting up at the gun show on Saturday is at least that's the way it was written up in the article I wrote or I read. Uh, we just go to the gun show or go to the gun store on Friday, buying a gun, turn around, and go into a gun show, selling it the next day at a gun show, and making 150 or 200 dollars, whatever the case may be, putting the money in his pocket. Sure. So he's turning a profit on a regular basis. He's buying and selling guns to for the sole intent of making money at it. Um, and they went after him for dealing without a license on that. So, well, yeah, if you're dealing, that's one thing. But you right. know. Yeah, I want a gun at Ducks Unlimited. I didn't want. Yeah, then you and, can sell that to your neighbor. That's that's. There's nothing illegal about that yeah. uh, in Florida. There are some states that have um, restrictive things. In Tallahassee, Leon County, Florida has a restriction. If any part of that uh, transaction takes place in public, uh, if you and your buddy, and the way I had it, the way it explains, so, so me and you are sitting, me, Fred, me and you are sitting at the restaurant, and you say, man, I'm looking for a, a, B, C, X, Y, D, whatever gun. And I say, well, I, I got one of them in the safe. I don't shoot anymore. And uh, but and I, I'm more than happy to give it to you or sell it to you at what I paid for it. Yeah. And and we have this conversation in public, and I say, hey, we you know we live a long distance apart. Meet me at the public's parking lot, and we'll do the exchange. Oh, you give me money, I give you the gun. Everybody's happy. We haven't violated any state law, but we did right then in Leon County, Florida. We we violated a county ordinance. You know how to do it. Get around that, right? <laughs> yeah, don't don't have that conversation or do the exchange in public. No, the, just go into the bathroom. Both of you go in the same stall. <laughs> Uh, obviously not public. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so, so anyway, the, the, the rule, the rule, the rule, the new rule that goes into effect 30 days after being published says the final rule clarifies when a person is engaged in the business as a dealer in firearms at wholesale or retail. Okay. So what they're saying is if you're in the business of, and, and that's been the case, if you're in the firearms business, you have to have an FFL. Yeah. All right, that's not new. But what they're doing is they're saying, okay, because, and honestly, we, we've we seen people who buy and sell guns for a living uh, at places, and they don't get FFLs, probably should have FFLs. Mm -hmm. Their primary purpose in life is to make money buying and selling guns, and they don't get an FFL. We have to have one because we have a brick-and-mortar store, and they make sure that we do that. And so I'm not opposed to people who are – Doing it for if I have to do it, you have to do it. Then people who are earning a living selling guns, making a profit on them, buying them at wholesale, selling them at retail, <clears throat> then maybe they should have to do it too. I don't have a problem with that personally because this should be uniform as long across as it the board. Does, as long as this doesn't <coughs> restrict me selling <coughs> you a, a personal gun out right, of my collection right. so that here's, you won't. Right. So. so here's the rule. It clarifies the definition. This is straight from their website. Clarifying the definition of dealer and defining the terms purchase, sale, and something of value as they apply to dealers. Adding, it adds definitions for the term personal collection or personal collection of firearms or personal firearms collection um, and for responsible persons. So it's starting, they're changing, they're adding some definitions. Um, setting forth conduct that is presumed to constitute engaging in the business of dealing in firearms and presumed to demonstrate the intent to predominantly earn a profit from the sale or disposition of firearms absent reliable evidence to the contrary in civil and administrative hearings. Uh, this is clarifying that the intent to predominantly earn a profit does not require the person to have received pecuniary gain. What does that mean, Fred? Uh, received a profit. Okay. Uh, monetary okay. gain, pecuniary, something, something of that. It does not require the person to have made money. And that intent does not have to be shown when a person purchases or sells a firearm for criminal terrorism purposes. So you don't actually have to make money <clears throat> in order to be doing it for a profit, apparently. Clarifying the circumstances when a person would not be presumed to be engaged in the business or dealing in firearms, including as an auctioneer, <clears throat> here you go, J.D., or when purchasing firearms for and selling firearms from a personal collection. So... Just because you're selling from a person, if you're selling from a personal collection, this makes it sound like they would not consider that being in the business of. So, but go back to that um, thing you said about to say there's always a catch. All right, but what you said that it did away with the intent, so you could unknowingly sell a gun to somebody that uses it for some sort of terrorism purpose, and you'd be responsible for that. 
That's, that's what it says. That's, that's bad. Okay, it says clarifying that the intent to predominantly earn a profit does not require the person to have received financial gain, and that intent does not have to be shown when a person purchases or sells a firearm. So it, you, they don't have to show the intent to make money. Just the fact that you made money. The fact, well, the fact that or you something that of you, value sounds to me like the fact that you transferred, transferred something in return for something else. So you, 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 you got something for something, and that could be a trade, that could be a purchase. Yeah, it's like you know. I tell you what. But I, let me let me let me clarify this though. That is once again, in my opinion, an overstep by the federal government because that's not a law that or a rule or whatever you want to call it that passed through Congress, which is the body which is that is what in they place. Always do. Which is exactly what happened with the the, the uh, pistol brace sure. ruling, final ruling on the mm-hmm. pistol brace. That the first time it went to court, it was such a bad bad act, if you will, on the government's part. It got pretty much immediately tossed out of court because it's but an overstep. It's just like they're always doing okay. something. So this it's, says that the Bipartisan Safer Community Acts enacted June twenty fifth of twenty twenty two. Expanded the definition of engaging in the business of firearms dealings to cover all persons who devote time, attention, and labor to dealing in firearms as a regular course of trade or business to predominantly earn a profit through the repetitive purchase and sale of firearms. Well, repetitive can be and more then, than once. More and than then, right. And then on March 14, 2023, Biden issued executive order, which among other things, directs the AG to develop and implement a plan to clarify the definition, as described, um, that's Merrick Garland, by the way, and Merrick Garland, right? And then and he there's, always then they're saying, and, there, and this is to mm-hmm. make sure that background checks are conducted, that um, and to facilitate safe storage by ensuring that child gun locks are provided with guns. So not only you get an NFL, you got to make sure, like we do, or be charged with a crime that you didn't give out a gun lock. We'll be right back. And we're back. So in the last segment, we're talking about some boring, dry and ATF stuff. And, and honestly, they're they're trying to they're trying to clarify things, but they're trying to clarify it so that they can be more restrictive. They're not trying to open it up; they're trying to shut it down. Yeah, and, more control. And 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 every every little incremental step that they make takes away a little bit more people's freedoms, a little bit more people's freedoms. And I think. You know, there's a there's an imperfect system in place already, and they're trying to make it more imperfect. They're trying well, to clarify here, here, and make it more restrictive than it already is. Well, and let's just not mince words. The goal of a certain administration is to get rid of personal firearm ownership. Yes. I don't disagree with you. Not one bit. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. So in the, there is a crime and gun problem guns used in crime problem in this country. There is a crime problem. They never seem to want to blame or lock up or punish the, the people criminal. doing the bad things. Mm-hmm. The, they, they want to blame. That's kind of like blaming the drug dealer. And, yeah, I get it. You you got a guy selling. Well, it's like blaming the bartender for the DUI. Yeah. You know, that's and it's exactly what they're doing. That, that is a mentality that some people have. And and instead of blaming the the person that got behind the wheel yeah. and drove the car and caused the crash and made that that's choice, why I have such a problem with that prosecution uh, of the Crumley kid, kid's parents out in yeah, uh, the, where they know, prosecuted the parents for the parents. The, for now, the, the parents are bad parents. There's no question about it. These people are idiots. <laughs> but the, to to hold them criminally responsible for a crime that their kid who was charged as an adult committed to me is asinine. Yeah. And that's just, and that's kind of my point is we, we want to seem to blame everything, but the evil act done by an evil person or mm-hmm. a bad person. We do. We, we just, we well, let's find, let's find the cause of this. Well, the cause of this is that was a bad person that did a bad thing in my mind and not let's blame everything, but let's blame the car he drove there in, the mm-hmm. gun he had, the, yeah. the, the bullets that he bought, the, the whatever. The gun ain't never got up out of itself and went and shot <laughs> somebody. Yeah. 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 Ever. <laughs> if you get into a if, – if, if that bass that, that's undersized or you catch too many fish, Paul, is it the fish's fault for biting the lure or is it your fault for throwing too many <laughs> of them in the live fault. well or my not fault. measuring them? My you know? fault for not counting them. You should try that. If I <laughs> 
Speaking of that, I know a good lawyer right here too. You never ever need that. <laughs> Speaking of that, there's plenty of water. So how's the yes, fishing? Yes, I tell you what, we got uh, no shortage of water. Man, Wednesday of this week was that some rain or Ooh. or what? I tell you what, and you know, finally up there on Lake Seminole, the lake's finally clearing up, starting to clear up, and here we get another five six inches, and it rained all the way to Atlanta. So I know we're going to be getting some muddy water next. We got week about eight inches at in my house. Eight inches. Yeah, and I got you the, said Lake. Your lake is the lake high. is up, and um, the running water. I've noticed is a lot of garfish around there. What's up with that? Yeah, they, they they'll come to that moving water. They, they'll fish be a always of, come to new water. Always. Anytime you have water in places where it wasn't before, yeah. the fish are going to move to that that flood water. That man, some of the best fishing days I've ever had on Apalachicola River. We were fishing in the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> or close to yep, it. You'll you know, be doing that again next the, week. Up I'm in sure. the woods, yep. you know, fishing up in the woods because that's where all the the critters that's coming up out of the ground and there's plenty right. of food for them. That's right. My nephew's out there trying to harpoon those gars. <laughs> <laughs> and, Did he get one? He got a couple of them. <laughs> Get you some gar back. Well, I tell you what, yeah, the, uh, uh, I, I'll pass. Now, now, do you have tilapia in your lake out there? Have you seen any tilapia? I didn't know tilapia. I thought that was a, like a Publix fish. I didn't even invasive. know. That. It is an invasive. It yes. is an invasive fish, and we have they are spawning all over Lake Seminole right now. And the, when you say they have a perfect bed, there's nothing in the bed, and it, like a bass will have a little stump or beer can or something yeah. he'll have something in the bed and a tilapia is just perfectly around and uh, i had a had a trip um this week with people come out come out from california and we was catching shell cracker and i was i was off the back of the boat i kept throwing a worm out there and i'd watch that tilapia come up there and look at it i thought he was going to hit it with no no cork or nothing just letting it sit there and he come up and he blowed it out of the bed <laughs> but so like can, a 15 pounder big and oh can you big old tilapia I mean, you can eat them. I mean, it's yeah, not my I, preferred I, fish, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't mean. know if I would. But I did. I know a um, General Yarborough last year. He caught a like a twenty pounder on a spinner bait, and he said he ate. And he said the thing was good. Really, the tilapia. My understanding is the tilapia that are in the in the in a native environment in the lake that are not being fed, that are being raised captively, uh, are very good to eat and not bad for you. The ones that you buy in the grocery store that are being yeah. used to clean up the tanks where right. other yeah. where other fish are yeah. being farmed are <laughs> yeah. very bad for you. They yeah. have all kind of contaminants and Yeah, I mean, the, you know, if I go to a restaurant and they tell me the specials tilapia, I'm thinking or Nile I perch. Know. I don't know if I Nile perch. That. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you don't want that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, I feel like a like that John Candy in that vacation rental movie where the guys <laughs> back there throwing the Mrs. Pauls in the fryer. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> but I tell you up there, the uh, the uh, the bass have been biting pretty good. Today I had a trip today. We had had a nine year old, and a ten year old, and a twelve year old in the boat with me. And boy, I tell you what, that was that was exciting. I was ducking and even, <laughs> dodging treble hooks. <laughs> do, 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 no, he's only throwing worms. JD. Okay, I got a little bit more sense than giving them all treble hooks. <laughs> but uh, but actually, we caught like ten bass this morning. That would have been Friday morning. And uh, got taking them again tomorrow, Saturday. So looking forward to fishing with them again, actually this afternoon and tomorrow awesome. morning. So looking forward a, to getting out there with them. Got a bald eagle coming flying around the house I right now. I've seen some too. And, uh, man, he got him about a two-and-a-half-pound bass the other day. I tried my best to get him to drop it, and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. No. <laughs> called him names. Yeah, he still didn't drop it. Called him bald-headed. and <laughs> Well, we, we uh, last week we caught a little. Tell him you uh, heard he tastes like manatee. I did. <laughs> JD, we caught like a, about a twelve inch bass, and it took it the took the bait kind of deep, you know. So we yep. got the hook out and threw it back, and it was out there on on the surface kicking. And out of nowhere, this osprey came. I mean, I done looked around. I was expecting it. Mm-hmm. I didn't see one nowhere. All of a sudden, bam! Come hit it. We got picked it up right by the boat. Hey. Them jokers. They can see a fish. That's kind of like me and my drone. A off. long way off. Yeah. Well, you got them magnifiers on your camera on your drone. Yeah, yeah. I need those so I can like hover high up above the pools and yeah. you know see what's <laughs> going on down below. You crazy. It's about that time of year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, the fishing's going to be boogered up. I'm afraid because I know the Oak Lock needs. We were looking. Yeah, I, was I looking just at went, the, went across a Little River. Coming down here, man, that's high well, I was, and muddy. I was, we're, we're, we're probably going to, for, for those in the Tallahassee area, probably going to close the skeet field down uh, today on Friday. Uh, we're getting, we're, the river's predicted to go to 
Right now, they're saying 27 and a half feet in Havana, which puts oh. water which puts water on our skeet field, and which means we got to move machines. So oh, the boy. sporting clays will be open this weekend. Uh, we're still doing some road repair and whatever from a from a blowout. We had about a five foot deep washout from the from the rain uh, was it Wednesday night, I guess, wow. um, on one of the roads. But we're getting that repaired right now. We had there was grass hanging on the on the uh, bridge going over the 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 ditch to the range where that ditch had come up about 12 feet you know wow. 10 12 feet from the normal from where it normally flows to the bottom of the bridge and there was debris on on there so oh, the pond level in my house continued to rise all day yesterday yeah after you cast off after, the back porch yet uh, you know the fish feeder is under is okay. the motors underwater <laughs> the floating dock floated across the pond oh, somebody else has a floating dock now and i gotta go get it and, i went out in the middle of the storm and turned on the pump and pumped out about four inches of water in my swimming pool <laughs> and then the next morning i got up and it was full again wow. and so when i air pumped out another three or four inches out of my swimming right. pool Mine drains itself, but I was up to the bullnose on the concrete around my pool, and it's you know so that was that's about probably six and a half, seven, eight inches or whatever of rain that that filled the pool up that fast. So, yeah, but mine yeah. mine overflowed. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm it sure just, mine may have too. I just I, well, I, mine I will mine will start draining itself when it gets completely full. Yeah, but it, then it stays completely full. The only thing that bothers me about pumping water out of it is then my salt concentration goes down. I have oh, to yeah. buy more yeah, salt. That's, that's get the, more salt. That's the aggravation of uh, living in Florida with a swimming pool. It's a, it's a constant dance between the keeping it green and keeping it clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> between the sun and the between the sun and the rainwater and uh, d- diluting your uh, your chlorine in there. Yeah, the pool boy is gonna have a lot of business this week. Everything go good yeah. at uh, Charlie. I ever <laughs> talked to everybody. Everything good and dothing at the range up there. Yeah, I, I didn't hear anything Nothing bad. I went up away. there. I went up there right before the storm and picked up some stuff, and you could see the clouds coming. I said, I got to get on up out of here. <laughs> and took off. Um, is this going to mess up the bass bedding? No, they, a lot of us have finished bedding by, by now, but there's still some still bedding. I think there's some areas over on the lake that the fish haven't even started yet. I think this next moon is going to be, if the water clear up a little bit, I think it's going to be good. That'd be good. I really do. Well, you said shell cracker. Yes, the shell cracker started bedding about two weeks ago. All right. Not the, the All right. not a big push. All right now. But now we got this muddy water, and you know you want to be able to see them where you can find oh, yeah. them. But I be, I'm, I'm ready to watch a court. I'm going to call you one evening. I'm, past the, point of want, on I'm past the point right now of wanting to go fishing. I'm at the needing to go fishing oh, point right now. So, <laughs> you know the difference. See if oh, we yeah. do a show oh, yeah. out on the water. Do what? What if we get a, like a get it recorded do, on the water? Do it on the water show? Yeah. Oh, be sure. like a Roland Martin thing. <laughs> He can go, ooh, son, every time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, my thing. Praise we'll the Lord. Just do a conference call. Everybody get their, their pieces. All right. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>